this Avenger that we're going on is, is one you don't want to miss. We're meeting up with my good friend Clay Guess, aka Flounder. This is really fun. I could get into this. I would say uh, I probably add a whole lot of humor to the fishing perspective when we're on a boat. <laughs> <laughs> this mouth. He's from Texas. He comes to the Keys. He fishes with us. He wanted us to come to his neck of the woods and be a part of the Baracho Pescador tournament. It's the best weekend of the year. Man, what these guys from Fort Worth are doing, it's good calls, it's bringing together a bunch of guys. Everybody loves to be on the water catching redfish. I cannot believe it. I told you we were gonna do it. <laughs> Get the net. We're making TVs and raising money for kids. We're making things happen, baby. We are making things happen, baby. Come on, baby. Come on. <laughs> Come on, Flounder. Going slow. Here he comes. Keep going. Keep going slow. Keep going. Got him. Pull. Let him go. Nasty. Nasty, buddy. Oh my God. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Easy. He's got him. Oh my God. That's awesome. Got him, baby. Nice. Yep. Easy. Yep. Oh, nice, baby. Woo! -hoo! Yeah. All the way over here. Yep, yep. Go. Nice. Woo! Jumper. See ya. Woo! <laughs> Got him. Got him, buddy. We'll just see where this goes. Yeah. Uh-oh, 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 uh-oh. <laughs> this Avenger that we're going on is, is, is one you don't want to miss. We're meeting up with my good friend Clay Guess, a.k.a. Flounder. Behind the scenes, this is what happened. Only the BTS footage for Silver Kings. One of the funniest guys that I've ever been around. You know, just full of energy, makes you laugh all the time. I mean, if I could have abs on my cheek, I have them after I'm around him. He's just, he's just, a, he's a character and a great fisherman on top of it. This is really fun. I could get into this. Maybe not the whole Prince Flair thing, but. I like getting ready to go on backstage. He's from Texas, he comes to the Keys, he fishes with us. He wanted us to come to his neck of the woods and be a part of the Baracho Pescador tournament. It's the best weekend of the year. Man, what these guys from Fort Worth are doing, it's good calls, it's bringing together a bunch of guys. Everybody loves to be on the water catching redfish. The Baracho Pescador, this is the best tournament of the year. At its root basis, it's a fishing tournament. But in reality, this thing is a whole lot more than that. This is kind of iCast meets Burning Man. All I can say is, welcome to Texas. Early morning start, boys. First thing in the morning. Ain't nothing we better. It. We got it. Some, there's some meat in this, Ma. There What's this thing rated at, anyway? <laughs> <laughs> A little low in the back end, you know what I'm saying? Rated for beef. It's already churning out in the beginning, just to what I know is it'd be a fun few days with a, just a great group of people. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you guys how I screw it up. Yep, you're up. Show us. Uh, oh, fish hooked up. Oh, and that's just hooked up. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really him. special. It's a really special place. <laughs> We're even sometimes, you know. Yeah. Look, clearing the line. Things happen on and off. Do you camera. see that guiding? Dude, your holy skills <laughs> is just outrageous. All right, this is how you get on the board. It's a whopper. Dude, this one's gonna. This one's gonna measure. <laughs> Woo! So we do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's my first Texas redfish as I'm clearing the line to There you go, buddy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's how it goes. <laughs> you hold up tight. That's a little guy, kinda like yourself. That's it, dude. I'll tell you, as I'm clearing the line, I go, oh, got him. 
No matter where you go, fish is just jumping in the boat after you, man. Well, that's uh, one way to start it. Right there. Thanks, buddy. There we go. And that's the show. Thanks for coming and being here today and being a part of Barracho. So that's, that's, a, that's, that's it. a wrap. That's I'll get it. a nap. That's a wrap. That's all we had to do. Dude, right? we, we can go back and get some breakfast burritos. <laughs> we do the best kolaches in the world. Have you had a kolache? I don't even know what that is. I don't even know how to spell it. I got to grab you also. Uh, please. Please do. I do have then. Look at the size of that fish. This is a beast, dude. Beast mode. Fish the legend. Your time on the water is precious. You return season after season to make unforgettable memories, fight a few fish, reconnect with friends, and recenter yourself. If you count on having this time, you need an outboard you can count on to power it. That's why boaters stay with Yamaha for the long run, for life. They know reliability starts here. Silver Kings is brought to you in part by Maverick Boats, Fish the Legend, Yamaha, Reliability Starts Here, Costa, See What's Out There, and by Bonefish and Tarpon Trust, bringing science to the fight. Now, 60 seconds in the mill house. All right, Brandon, thank you for coming on to the, uh, the podcast. I really appreciate you guys having me on here. I mean, it's just an honor. All the names and everything you have, all the people that I've grown up, you know, just idolizing my whole life. So it's really special. Did tournament fishing make you a better fisherman? Hands down, without a doubt, completely changed every aspect of my life. You know, because fishing was always just taking people out, tourists, right. and showing them a good time. And uh, I'll never forget, you know, like like when weather was bad, I kind of grew up with the mentality, like, ah, oh, fishing sucks. It just is what it is. Can't do anything about it. And, uh, and now you got to catch a fish. Now you got to catch a fish. But I also just realized that people are doing this on a different level than just going out and having fun, you know, which I love to do. And I still mm -hmm. try to do that every day even on, on tournaments. But, like, people train for it. Like, okay, like these guys that are competing in these tournaments aren't just guys that are going out and getting lucky and having fun. These guys are professionals. Like they're dedicating their lives to getting better at this sport and they're taking it to a different level. And that just fascinated with me. I fell in love with it because my work ethic, that just gave me something to shoot for. And uh, it just seemed like something that was just so unconquerable and so far in the future that I just, I mean, I never thought that I would win my first tournament until I was in my forties. To watch this and other full-length episodes of the Millhouse podcast, go to YouTube or wherever you find your podcasts. This is it. Film it. Film it. Oh, no. Film it. Get it going. Get it. Get it. Get it. Get it. Shut up! You know, when I get on the top of the skiff, and it's not very often that I do, I just get laser focused and I kind of see through the water. Nine o'clock, there's a sheephead tailing right here. Like right, right about where that. Unfortunately, I didn't happen to see the fence in front of us. Hoop, hoop. Find it, won't give him another shot. Missed him, go again. Yeah, I, I understand, but never mind. Just let him figure it out. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I had my eye on a sheephead. I know Jared has a thing for sheepies. I didn't realize, how did one I pick one with a damn rail in it? <laughs> Of all the spots. I was, so, I was, so, I was yeah, trying to tell well, you. I was looking at the sheep head. I knew this exactly how this was going to go. <laughs> Flounder down here in Texas, I mean, he just thinks he, he thinks he's it. You know, he gets up there driving. He already he already made a couple comments that he should be voted in to the guys association without a guy's license, no doubt. You know, his, his skill level's there, he thinks. I got to get my guidance license, too. What's that entail? Jared, how do I go? <laughs> Like, how do I do that? We should get it. We should get it done today. 
The way he gets up and down the platform, I mean, you would think he's been doing it all of his life. There's no doubt. <laughs> Let's go. Come on. I've had enough. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> no. This mouth. <laughs> Yeah, those are reds. Yeah, those are reds. Those are reds right yeah. there, yeah. School level. Get it in there. Strip, strip, strip. You're in it, buddy. Boom! Boom, baby! Boom, Boom baby! Go. Let's go! Side pressure. I cannot believe it. I told you we were going to do it. Get the net! Get out the flounder. Yeah, get that off. Get the that. net! Don't let this thing get off! You got prompt time to it. Get out the flounder. Oh, look at that. He's a giant. Get the net, baby. Look at it. Get that net. Back get that net. Get in there. I, I don't know what, this, what is it. Am I supposed to run down and like hug you? I don't, I've never been in this situation. If I run down on this platform, Captain Flounder, get down. I'm, I might fall too. Turn the big motor on. No. What is, oh, 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 hey, hey, hey. hey. I, can't, I did so good spot those fish and oh, got yeah. you in that. Oh. oh. Man, Dude, this is good. Buddy, we'll see you later. Thank you. Father, you've officially pulled me into a fish. Ah. Oh. My the tables have, tur the tables up, have turned in it our relationship now. The tables have turned. Oh. Man, the way you spotted them Thanks. and guided me into them, phenomenal. I know we're here raising money for kids, but this kid just had his dream fulfilled, man. I I'm taking Florida Keys guys fishing the Texas coast and we're making TVs and raising money for kids. We're making things happen, baby. This thing's been going on for 12 years. It, it was, it's neat because this thing started as an email about a couple guys who wanted to go on a fishing trip. 12 years later and close to a million dollars raised to fight childhood Rett syndrome, this is what it's become. Rett's disease is a genetic disorder that affects children. It's kind of like autism meets muscular dystrophy. And the auction is all about raising money. It's about driving up money, getting funds, and putting those funds back into the research for Red Syndrome. My daughter was diagnosed with Red Syndrome in 2004. And we have, uh, we've been fighting the fight to, to get research. It's a very underdiagnosed disorder. We go out there and, and we spread the word. And, and my way of doing that was through fly fishing to get to know the people behind the industry and the generosity, it blows me away. Like this blows me away every day, it's crazy. Just like Red's disease that can affect any child, anybody can be here and anybody can be a part of this and anybody can join in on this fun and anybody can contribute. It's really amazing to, to watch everybody have such a great time uh, you know, raising money for such a great cause. It's all about the water. And healthy habitats. And effective management. Conserving our flats fisheries takes all three. That's why BTT is working on all of them. If we do less, we'll lose. And so will the next generation. You can help us achieve the Grand Slam of conservation by supporting Bonefish and Tarpon Trust. Become a member today at BTT.org. And join us as we bring science to the fight. To learn more, visit BTT.org. When you make the kind of investment I have in boats, from my skiff to my contender, choosing the right trailer is everything. And I choose Ameritrail. They're built tough, man. You know, not only are they stylish and look good, and they have all these features, everything about it is done right. And it makes me feel comfortable trailing my boat down the highway. Ameritrail trailers. Load, launch, relax. Silver Kings is brought to you in part by Shimano Fishing Products and G. Loomis Rods. Feel connected. Woo! Simrad Chart Plotters. Go with confidence. Ameritrail Trailers. Load, launch, relax. 
and by Pathfinder Boats, angler driven. Did way too many things last night. Do we have a plan? No. <laughs> Perfect. Dude, we're already, this is the plan. We're on the boat, so we're, step one, complete. We've already just, the first day, I laughed so hard. And, you know, I think uh, that night we maybe blew it out a little harder than we should. And we wake it up the second morning of the tournament. And, and it, it is a comedy show already, but I think we all feel in it. Another day, another day, but last night we raised a bunch of dollars. I think we did like 95K in the live auction. <laughs> it is too early, bro. I don't need all that reflection off of you. 100 sounds a whole lot better. Close to 100K. Are you still talking to us? Huh? And as we're trying to collect any idea of what we're gonna do or where we're even gonna go, you know, we're just sitting back, flounders all laid out, I'm laid out. Where I think the whole town of Port O'Connor wakes up a little, a little foggy headed and a little uh, tired from a lot of the festivities that were put on. But at the end of the day, you realize, man, we made a lot of things happen for kids. And we raised a lot of money for kids. Get them, boy! Yeah! I think our team, me, Cliff, and, and Flounder, are, are taking it a different approach. Of course, you want to catch some fish. I don't know this place. I don't really think they know this place. And we're just gonna go out there and just have some fun in the water. Got him! Yeah. Oh. oh! Oh, there! Ladyfish, baby! <laughs> there yeah, he there is! Oh, he pulled the hook. Jared is one of those guys that only comes around once in a while. My line management, on point, okay? Casting, tight. Okay, at all times. You did tight. miss a telling fish a second ago. Dude, I don't need to start with you guys. Yeah. <laughs> on what, what is missed. His personality, um, he's so good at what he does. And you can even see that when he's on the boat here. Like he, he might be out of his home waters, but he's not out of his home. He knows all 17 feet of that skiff better than anybody, I think. Oh, red right there in front of you. Got him, good fish. Oh, nice. Oh, good left. Oh, oh, got him! Oh, nice there we fish! Go. Yeah. Ooh, power pull me, baby. Send it, send yeah. it, send pull, it. Power pull down, baby. All right. I like it. I like it a lot. I like it a lot. Come on in, baby red. <laughs> Come on. Get out of that. Come on. Come on. Gotta get him a little bigger than this, but I'll take it. That'll work. I'll Beautiful. take it. Flounder, you gonna go ahead and land it. this bad boy it. for I me? Yeah. Yeah. Sure, be... Watch this peak. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is a this is an interesting part. <laughs> He's gonna make love with his hands. Oh, yeah. oh. Beauty. Beautiful. Hey. I'll take it. All day long. I'm gonna show you how to catch it. A nicer one now. Okay. Show me how big. No, you're you're, no, you're you're next. Me? Yeah. Beautiful. All right, buddy. Thank you very much. Awesome. Sweet. Great job, Dan. <laughs> Great job. This is what you pay your price of admission for here, man. They're, they're doing it. They're doing it right. They're doing it tight. I insist on having a clean boat when I fish. It helps protect my tackle, helps protect everything about that boat. So when I choose a cleaner degreaser, there's only one choice, Formula 88. Cut! Ah, oh, damn it, fabulous! Just take it down a notch there, cowboy. Silver Kings is brought to you in part by Maverick Boats. Fish, the legend. Woo! Get ready. 
ready. Might be one more. Get ready. Mako reels, built to last, Not built to stop. stop. There we go. Woo! And by Bonefish and Tarpon Trust, bringing science to the fight. That's what it's all about, That's Kato. what it is all about. Come on, step up. Where are your grades at? Where are your grades at? Oh, A oh. plus. Oh. A plus. And now, a minute from our conservation partner, Bonefish and Tarpon Trust. Permits considered, you know, that ultimate trophy game fish, right? It's a once in a lifetime fish, and it's really symbolic to the Florida Keys. What we've noticed over the last decade or so is a good steady reduction in the numbers of permits. And we started asking questions, you know, what's happening, what's going on? And BTT came along and said, hey, you know, why don't we take a look at how we can do some science here and maybe we can help you guys answer some of these questions. So some of the guides partnered with the scientists at BTT and we conducted a thorough analysis of what was going on. Lo and behold, it turns out that a lot of the flats fish that we see, you know, in Target on the flats utilized one particular spot on the reef for spawning. That spawning site's called Western Dry Rocks. At that spawning site, there's also mutton snappers spawning, there's snappers that are spawning, and there's obviously a lot of fishermen targeting those fish. That was creating kind of this unsustainable pressure. The only really effective management that we could see was to have a temporary seasonal closure at this site. If you let them spawn, they're gonna make babies and it's gonna be better for everybody. We're just in the opening kind of salvos of this. We're trying to evaluate what's going on. We're trying to evaluate whether it works and whether it's effective or not. And BTT's been involved from the beginning and will be involved all the way through the end. To learn more, visit BTT.org. There he is, Derek, got him. Derek, Derek, <laughs> grab it. Lunch. I'm Lunch. Not, I'm not paying attention. It's oyster. <laughs> I got his oyster. Do not break my rod. <laughs> Get up. Hold on, he's fighting back. Sick. <laughs> awesome. I would say uh, I probably add a whole lot of humor to the fishing perspective when we're on the boat. Not to say Jared isn't a funnier guy, but he's better at catching fish. Straight nonsense. That Mako really handles dude, it well. Just, you just crank it down just a little bit, dude, and it's perfect for pulling oysters, dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there it is, the right of the Over here. It's going to be a, your 3, 233, Jared. Oh, nice pop up. Is it hard bottom? I'll go wait over to yeah, it. Yeah, it's hard bottom. It's hard bottom. It's pretty good sand. I, I mean, I'm competitive. You know, like, anything I do, I, I, I want to I wanna be in the running, but. If there's a chance of me catching, I, we're running by, I've seen all these people waiting everywhere. I'm like, you know, I'm going to get out. I'll get out and walk around and there's actually a chance we might get on the board here. Hey, I did it! Yay! Hey, black drum, baby! <laughs> Hold on, you need the net. Come on, he's a, he's a monster. Come get him, Flounder. <laughs> Come on, baby. Come on. Come on, Flounder. Get him, dude! Get him! Get him, Flounder! Get him, Flounder! Go wild! Oh my God! Oh. <laughs> we got him, baby! Woo! Dude, thanks for the net job, man. Dude, all out of breath, huh? There's. Dude, you took my breath away. Thanks for that, man. I think it's time for us to go see you. who actually really won this tournament. Let's, <laughs> let's go think, do I it. Think, I think it's time for that. Let's you do know? it. Let's do it. I know we weren't in it for the tournament win, but in my mind, those are the best couple days I've ever had in a tournament. The best couple days I've ever had. Comes. 
a grass flat at sunrise, where light and sky meet crystal clear water. For those who stalk the flats, it's a time of magic, when a slight ripple on the surface and emerging tail fin can set your heart racing. A permit turning to inspect your fly might be your only success on the day. So what is it about the pursuit of these fish that holds such mystique for anglers? It's a fish that commands kind of this dedicated focus. You gotta get inside their head a little bit. If you have the right fly and make the perfect cast, you might have a chance. This is not your average fish. This creature, the permit, is not an honest customer. The permit is so mystique because it, it is the hardest fish in the world to catch on fly. And every time when I think I'm starting to figure them out, they surprise me. You know, the further you get along in this sport, eventually all roads lead to permit. You, you run out of challenges, and 20 years into this game, I haven't run out of that challenge. Permit are found throughout the Caribbean, but it's the Florida Keys that have been the prime destination for pursuing large permit for decades. Legendary Keys guide Steve Huff helped to pioneer the sport of fly fishing for permit. Well, I started guiding in 68. I didn't know squat. I didn't have a gray hair in my head when I started permit fishing, so <laughs> now it's white and falling out, so. There were more permit around, certainly a lot more permit, but not many people were actually fly fishing for them. But nobody really knew, I don't think, or had studied or tried to become aware of how the permit were moving around on different tide stages and where they were on the fall and you know what, how they came onto a bank and all this stuff. Nobody was really doing that so much. Then, you know, I was mainly bait fishing them, and then this guy called me one time, Del Brown, and, and he said, I really want to do a lot of permit fishing. I want to do it with a fly rod. I said, he, he says, I understand, you know, we're, there's a good amount of permit. I said, hell yeah, well, let's do it. So we did. We started going after them, and we started messing with flies, different retrieves and all this stuff. Started catching them, and then we started catching some more of them, and it kind of changed the whole uh, panorama of people's willingness to go do it, you know? They said, holy Christ, these guys are catching them. They can actually be caught there, even though there's a good deal less fish. And the only reason I know that is I haven't been down there a heck of a lot lately, but I just hear people saying, oh God, we got seven shots today. And I go, I mean, back then we were getting, I, God knows if we had, had, if we had the knowledge that we have now, because we were getting, some days 50 shots, some days 30 shots, you know. A slow day would be 15 or 20 shots, you know. So there was just a lot of permit around. I, I don't know, I can't put my, my finger on an exact point where project permit started, but um, it certainly came out of concern from anglers and guides about what was happening with the permit population. Permit are more impressive than ever to the Keys' iconic flats fishery, which generates more than 465 million annually. But since those early days, the angling pressure has steadily increased while the water quality and the amount of healthy habitat have decreased. That's permit, permit. Our BTT approach that involves science to conservation to making change starts with our cooperation with anglers. Anglers help us identify problems they see on the water that then we can go to scientists and ask for them to evaluate. As we got into permit conservation, an immediate process we had to do was follow the permit to find out where they go, what was their path in life, Sweet, baby. where did they counter vulnerabilities that could cause the decline. So it, I think it just kind of came as a natural for, for Costa to step up uh, and say, hey, you know, this is an important signature fish uh, for the state of Florida and for the Keys in particular for fishing guides. Like I just saw a little puff of mud real close to the boat, about 30 feet from the boat at 11 o'clock. There you there go. You go. There's, There's one. one. Got one. 
you know, you look around the world and BTT is the organization when it comes to protecting, you know, flats fish. Easy, yep. That's a mature breeding fish that probably just came back from Western Dry Rocks this summer. Oh, yeah. At the time, not much was known about this elusive species. So the initial goal of the project was to understand the movement of permit in the Keys and to make sure that the special permit zone was large enough to adequately protect them. Guides, anglers, and scientists worked together, tagging more than 1,000 permit with dart tags and recording the captures. The data showed that the special permit zone was large enough, but with guides reporting continued declines in permit catches, it was clear that more research was needed. Working with stakeholder groups like BTT is a great way to get an idea of how anglers might feel about a particular topic. And BTT has been a great partner with the FWC because they help us get input about particular issues and they help us think about new ways to accomplish conservation. FWC and BTT work so well together because we bring science to the table. We bring unbiased, third-party academic science that they can use to make decisions. <laughs> Good work. Kill it, eh? Good work. Yes, sir. Yes, awesome. sir. Let's get another one. The next important step in Project Permit was to determine where permit feed and spawn in the Florida Keys. To do this, BTT scientists used acoustic transmitters to record movement patterns of 150 permit over the course of five years. The results brought into focus the importance of one spawning site in particular, known as Western Dry Rocks, a 1.3 square mile area near Key West. These are the, the paths of the Keys permit as they converge and go back to their, their flats after they spawn. I think from the study we've gotten over 500,000 unique detections from permit that we've tagged and that, that provides us with just an absolute treasure trove of information. This shows all the movements of all the permit compressed into one figure over five years. And even this, you can see where activity is really high and you can see how kind of everything's kind of converging at this one central point and that's Western Dry Rocks. Though permit are extremely hard to catch on the flats, they become very vulnerable at their spawning aggregations. And fishing those spawning aggregations causes a lot of problems. One, it disrupts their spawns, they can't get their hormones right to really make the act happen. And then also, with all that biological activity, there's also a lot of sharks around that are waiting for an easy meal of a distracted permit or a hook permit. So that, that is a major stress we've been working to resolve. BTT shared these findings with the Keys Guide and Angling communities and with FWC, informing the Commission's important decision to close Western Dry Rocks to all fishing during the April through July spawning season. All anglers from around the country also lent their voices in support of the seasonal closure of this critically important site. I really uh, feel for the offshore guys you know, in this situation because uh, I come from an offshore background. I'm the first generation born flats guide. Uh, my father did offshore for over 30 years. At the end of the day, you're closing one location that's going to help out. Like I said, I'm tired of hearing back in the day stories. We finally have a chance to let these fish spawn and grow. I want my children to be able to go out there and experience it the way I did when I was a kid. Been asking for this day for a while. <laughs> no school. Big. Big girl fishing with dad. Rock and roll! I think my dad likes permit because they're really hard to catch and it's really fun. And I think when you release it, you get this really good feeling. And when you're in, you get your adrenaline going. Keep tight, keep tight, keep tight. That's it. Yeah, there you go. That's it. That's a lot bigger than my first permit, Alice. <laughs> Easy, 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 bub. So I think that we're just in the opening salvos of this project permit, and I'm looking forward to, you know, seeing what's ahead with future pathways and, you know, following this fish and this story, because I think it can be impactful. What we're doing here can mirror and match what other species and other fisheries need, not only in the United States, but elsewhere throughout the world. 
uh, and hopefully this knowledge and experience that we're having, you know, that can be replicated elsewhere. Pull, 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 pull. Keep coming. Keep coming. Pull up hard now. Easy. Give it all you got, Alex. All you got. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> oh my God, Alex Benson! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that is big! That is really big! The success of Project Permit is the story of a time-tested approach to fisheries conservation. It's a story of research to find science-based solutions and collaboration with guides and anglers. It's a story of advocacy and cooperation with Florida FWC to effect much needed change, and all with the vital support of a visionary corporate partner, Costa Del Mar. South Florida's permit will prosper at the pinnacle of flats fishing now and for future generations of anglers. The interesting thing about what you would call an insane or a dedicated fly fisherman is that a lot of these people that I have fished over the years, incredible fly casters and financially secure, never had to worry about anything. They've, they've been everywhere in the world and fished for everything that swims from giant tuna in Nova Scotia to black marlin off Australia. And they all wind up either in South Florida or some tropical destination with a fly rod on their hand, trying to catch something that doesn't bite. <laughs> that's where we all wind up, <laughs> you know? Bring on the pain, so that's it, pretty much. <laughs>